Welcome to Honest Whispers Unboxing and Inspection. On this video, I'll be unboxing and inspecting Batman, the animated series, Harley Quinn, Artifacts Plus Statue, 110 scale pre-painted model kit. This was released by Kotobukiya on August 2018, based on the designs by Bruce Tim, sculpted by MIC slash Yoshiki Fujimoto. And this figure or statue is made out of PVC, ABS, and magnet, which is why it has one of these little snap fit logos because with the magnet, it just fits nicely. Now, this is my second one because the first one I bought kind of had a crack and I did buy it from Big Bad Toy Store. They did change the policy where they don't really exchange or refund cosmetic uh, or cosmetic type of blemishes uh, although for me I thought it looked more like a crack than some kind of stain either way out of courtesy they did go ahead and uh, take it back uh, they did take it back and then they gave me a refund although like I said it was out of courtesy so they did make it clear that next time I won't have that kind of privilege so I did buy this from directly from the Kotobukiya booth at the 2019 WonderCon. So I'm about to open, inspect it, and because I bought it at a booth uh, or at a con, basically can't return it or exchange it. Uh, so I'm just hoping this is in perfect condition. So as I open this, I did notice once again that there's only one sticker on the bottom. Well, there's three factory seal stickers here. Uh, I guess it would be easier to just open from the bottom, but for me, a uh, bit of OCD going on here, so I'm going to have to go ahead and just open from the top. Now, in cases like this, I would probably just slice carefully and then just uh, peel at the stickers later. I, yeah, I was going to see if I could pry it open kind of at least the sticker part and then just peel out but I'd rather not take the risk of scratching the box or anything like that so I'm just going to go ahead and make very careful incisions uh, cases like this rather than trying to go ac across like that because when you it won't just slice through and it'll start pushing the sticker so what I'm going to do is just from that, just before the edge, I'm going to kind of give it a little poke. And then from there, I could go back and forth. That way, I'm not losing control by trying to force it. So again, I'm going to go ahead and uh, give it a nice little poke. And then slice it through. So right now... I'm going to go ahead and see if I could get this open without without making a crease on the top part. See if I could get this at least one edge out without ripping right here where the slit is. I'm definitely trying to be careful where I use just enough force to kind of pull this out, although it is very stiff so there we go so how I grabbed it is rather than just grabbing one part I try to uh, I, I used actually I ended up using two fingers that way I can kind of spread out the pressure that I'm putting into the box or at least the cover part and that way I have less risk of making a crease on the box and as a collector uh, yeah unfortunately I even do care about the box condition just so if ever is the time when I might decide to sell this at least uh, on the long run the condition of the box can make a difference on the final price let me go ahead and slide this out 
we'll go ahead and uh you know what? i'm not going to close the box i'm just going to go ahead and put the box in the black right there so as you can see uh basically it has these little tabs that's been um locked in there so that it won't fall apart i do like the way they uh package this just because it's very sturdy she doesn't move and not worried about anything scratching now looking at the back where this was right here on the back of her collar what had, had this little slit type of line which really did look like a crack so looking at it right here I'm not seeing that looking at the paint of the face and everything everything looks pretty good i'm not seeing any kind of weird blemishes that's standing out let me try looking at these faces and these parts and consistently they all look good they don't look like there's any kind of weird blemish or anything like that so happy so far very uh compared to what i had before and i'm gonna carefully well, before I do that, I forgot that they have this factory seal. It's just scotch tape, basically. But, looks like they have two on each side. None on top, none on bottom. And, looks like... Okay, this, because it's plastic, and I'm not worried about scratching this as much. This is where I'm going to go ahead and use the knife. To kind of pull this pull the tape out a bit and that way I mean this is more than enough right here but basically it's enough for my finger to kind of slide under get a grip and then I'll go ahead and slowly pull this out and if I leave like these uh, adhesive residue I'm not too worried about it. I'm just going to save this tape for later. And what I'll do is I'll just dab this out. So just by doing that, you can see how right here it just tends to come off on its own without using some kind of goof off, you know, solvent or anything like that or some kind of chemical. You don't have to wipe it or try to clean it. Just the same tape that came it, it came from you just dab it over and over now this does take time so I'll go ahead and finish that later uh, but I just wanted to show an example of how you can get rid of those sticky residues right away especially on something like a smooth plastic like this uh, like a glossy paper it does work on that too which I'll probably dab out with this but there are some like maybe like thin cardboard type of paper where if you do dab it you might pull out uh, I guess the um, the outer layer of the either cardboard or the cover so I wouldn't recommend it uh, do use your best judgment as far as when you should dab these residue out or not all right, two down, two to go, and then here we, yeah, this one's hard to see, but again, I'm just gonna, and it looks like this one's actually taped in there, like it's kind of, in other words, it's like, uh, <laughs> the inner part is in the, uh, it's kind of folded in there, the tape is folded in there rather than flat out so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this a little bit like that I'm gonna pull it apart a little bit and once I do I'm gonna see if I could either slice this open or use a knife like it's not slicing but it was good enough for me to pull the edge where I can grab it now and of course as I did that turn move, I ended up started ripping part of it off. 
and I don't want to leave part of this tape there so I'm gonna go ahead and start working on the other the bottom part or the other side and then that way I can pull out the rest unfortunately it didn't work I did leave a piece here and in case like that I would have to use the nail my fingernail to kind of scratch it off which again I would do later on so I'm not turning this video into like a 45 minute video same issue here I don't have enough tape or space to put this knife in so it looks like I'm gonna have to kind of pull this apart or if, although this one's harder to pull apart unfortunately in this case I'm just gonna have to make a little slice in the middle and I'll go ahead and I'll peel the tapes out individually afterwards you see so with my thumb I am positive that it is split now so now I can go ahead and I'll pull this apart now I don't want to use full force and just you know try to open it I'm sure all the pieces will fly out and everything so I'm just gonna try to um, just gently pull each part out uh, now if you feel you can't do it as carefully you know there is another technique where you, you pull it apart start putting one of your fingers in and as you push your finger in or your thumb basically it'll pry it open so that's another safe technique that you could use so that all the pieces won't go flying out because you use too much force. See that was pretty close right there where things started popping out. Alright, so got that done. Always like this little box case where you could put all the little parts in but for me I, I do like to save my uh, you know everything like from the cover and stuff so i'll probably never use the box just so that it stays in the same condition that i got it in now it looks like they are kind of holding in place very happy with that and another cool thing is this thing doesn't have uh, I mean, it already comes pretty much assembled. So these extra parts and accessories, they're basically uh, just, I mean, it's a really nice options to have different facial expressions and things like that. So with this, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just carefully pull it up. Now, actually, before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and take the base out which is actually under these accessories and then once I pull this out and since it has kind of a plastic cover to it it won't come out or anything like that so I just keep this standing right there and this is the base I wanted to take out but you know what I just realized is that there's no pegs or anything, but it is magnetic. So this is a nice solid metal base. Uh, and I do like the Batman uh, image, just like what you would see on the cartoon, or at least if I recall the ending credits kind of had that, I think it had that image. So let me go ahead and put this aside the bag I do like to keep the bag uh, again closest to the same condition I got it in and with this there it is you can see how the figure just latches on to the base with the magnet and I have to say this is Again, I'm sure I said this on the first video, 
This is one of my favorite Harley Quinn statues or figures ever. And mainly just because the way it looks, the quality, everything. It's, it's literally like 2D animation come to life. Now, since it's actually out of the package, I can show you that uh, there are some, I mean, it's not like huge mistakes or anything, but I feel like maybe it's just reflection, but where her eyes are, the lines, the borders, it's just not that solid looking. Let's see, let's see if I can get that. So you could see a bit of the black blending in, like in her pupils. Even, I guess what's supposed to be her, her eyebrows, you can see right there on the edge. Uh, it's not a huge deal. I did kind of notice it. Almost looks like reflection of the light. So let me see if I could turn this a bit. So with this, without the reflection, definitely does look darker. But again, you can see a bit of the black kind of bleeding in. Almost looks like um like airbrush. And even right here on the top corner of her mask, right here, just at the edge, right there at the tip, you can see it's not there is some bleeding on that as well. Otherwise. I don't see any issues or any other issues. Uh, maybe right here, her right collar doesn't have a clean uh, border. So it looks like the white is bleeding onto the black. But that is something you would have to look again very close at otherwise it is kind of hard to notice so let me go ahead everything else is I mean she is pretty simple as far as her costume design goes nothing all intricate and stuff like that the diamonds very nicely done uh, at least you could see the sharpness of every corner, uh, the edges, nice, straight, uh, looks great. So very happy with that. And comparing with my first one I had, uh, yeah, I'm pretty much happy with this. Now, just noticing here, now the paint line is straight, but unfortunately it looks like they kind of missed where the seam line is. So now I could see that red seam line on the red, the, the seam line on the red rather than being exactly where the border between the black and white should be. So let me kind of look back. That is, um, you know, it's not that noticeable, but even from afar, just because it's an indented line, especially from here, top angle. Yeah, even from a far away, you can kind of notice it. It's a little disappointing, but compared to one where it had like a black crack looking line right there, I guess I would still prefer this just because, I don't know, I mean, I'll be honest, I think this kind of bothers me just just as much or maybe just a little less. So, like I said, if I had a choice between this or my first one, I would still go with this. But I am kind of disappointed at how you have that seam line. And I guess from like different angles where the light doesn't reflect on the crack or the seam line 
you really can't tell but when the light can reflect off of it and either creates a shadow then yeah it does look a little weird otherwise I really like the statue I like the pose I like the look it really does capture the essence of Harley Quinn Just I'm very happy with it. The sculpt, the look, everything looks great. And again, just with pure honesty, her butt looks really good too. Nice proportional legs. So definitely happy with this. And what makes it cool too is how this statue uh, doesn't really show it only shows Joker's face as the bonus parts, but the way this goes with the Joker statue and how you could pose right next to it and it looks like, you know, like the perfect villain couple, you know, standing right next to it. So really like that combination of how they released this and the Joker one at the same time. So... I'm just curious if Kotopakia will do other kind of artifact statues where they can kind of come in pairs or either like a group set kind of thing. So there it is. And again, very happy with it. I do recommend it and overall compared to other companies even with these slight little blemishes Kotobukiya is very consistent with their um, quality so uh, definitely recommend it you really can't go wrong unless you're really over picky kind of like me I guess <laughs> but otherwise uh, yeah I would recommend this just because it probably uh i don't think it's fully sold out yet but definitely something i would say has a potential to really go up in value once it's completely sold out so thank you for watching until next time continue reading the king james version bible and eat your vitamin c's daily